Ah, Lebanese food. Now it's time to go back to our roots. With a Lebanese restaurant on every corner, it may be safe to say that Lebanese cuisine may be the best in the Middle East. When my family goes to my grandmother, or in Arabic, my teta's house for Shabbat, one of my favorite dishes that she makes is her lahme bajin. In Arabic, translates to meat on dough. Lahme, which means meat, B, which means on, and ajin, which means dough. This Middle Eastern classic or Lebanese classic is perfect as hors d'oeuvres in small sizes or as an entire meal if you're making a big larger one. No matter the case, it's gonna have you craving more and more each time. So now that our mouths are watering, it's time to learn how we make this incredible lahme bajin, the authentic Lebanese way. We're gonna start off with our dough because the dough takes the most amount of time. We wanna get it out of the way as quickly and as soon as possible. I'm gonna be using our Bosch Ultimate Mixer. This is an incredible mixer in general when you have larger recipes. It's extremely sturdy, it suction cups onto the table. I absolutely love it. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. Go ahead and check it out. Get four cups of flour into your Bosch mixer. It seems like I ran out of flour. Just gonna go ahead and open up a new pack. Perfect. There we go. Now in the same cup that we use to scoop out the flour, we're gonna fill it up with warm water, not too hot. We're gonna add in a teaspoon of sugar and about two and a half to three teaspoons of instant yeast. The warm water, the sugar, and the little bit of flour that's in that cup will act as food for the yeast and that warm water will expedite the process. So it's gonna be moving very, very fast. Now set that aside and we're gonna move quickly. Add in a nice tablespoon of salt into the flour mixture and stir it so that it becomes homogenous. Now in the time that you went to measure the salt, to add it in, and to mix it with the flour, you should already notice that your yeast mixture has already started to bubble and starting to expand quite rapidly. So we're gonna go ahead and take it and add it into our flour mixture right away. Set your mixer to low speed and add in your yeast mixture. Once you notice that it's taking a nice shape, turn the speed up to medium and let it knead it for at least 10 minutes. You wanna keep an eye on it. If you're noticing that it's too dry, add in a little bit more water. If you're noticing it's just too wet, add in a drop more flour. You don't wanna to add too much flour here. Now, as it's kneading, it's gonna be helping that gluten form a nice bond with all the ingredients together, making it perfect for the next stage. Time management in a kitchen is critical. So while you're waiting for that to finish kneading, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Your lahme bajins are gonna come out so incredible, you're gonna to wanna to subscribe to this channel. So while you're at it, click the subscribe button down below and ring that bell. You'll keep up with all the videos that we have coming out. Time's up. Go ahead and dust the table with just a little bit of flour and transfer the dough onto the floured surface. You're gonna wanna give it a couple more kneads to help form a beautiful ball. Get yourself a separate bowl and add in a generous amount of vegetable oil. Go ahead and take that dough ball, put it inside, sprinkle some of that oil all over the ball. It should actually look like as if the dough is sitting in a bath of oil. Cover the bowl with saran wrap or a damp towel and let it rest on the side until it doubles in size, which could take about an hour, an hour and a half. Now it's time to start on the meat. In a food processor, toss in a full onion, a couple cloves of garlic, and a bell pepper. You can use red, green, yellow, whatever color you want, and mince it really well. Now in a large bowl it goes. Add into the bowl a kilo of minced meat, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, a heaping tablespoon of seven Arabic spice mix that I got from Costco. But as you can see, it's a blend of allspice, cinnamon, cardamom, black pepper, and nutmeg. Now you can add whatever blend of spices you want. This is the one that I find works the best and has really the authentic Lebanese flavor. Add in a bit of salt and a nice can of tomato paste. The tomato paste will help bind everything together. Now this is the time where you get your hands dirty. Get those hands in there and start squeezing and mushing everything together. Perfect. The meat is done and ready to go. Go ahead and cover it and keep it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. The dough has been resting for about an hour, an hour and a half, and let's go ahead and take a look. Would you look at that dough? Absolutely more than doubled and for sure ready to go. Now, to be honest with you guys, this is the part that's gonna be the messiest and the oiliest of the entire cooking process. Before you touch that dough, get a baking tray and cover it well with aluminum foil. Make sure to keep it near you as we start to work with the dough. Set your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and let it preheat. Dip your fingers in the oil in the bowl 
and rub it around the counter where you'll be working. Take the dough out and place it over the oil. Time to take your knife and cut small portions from the dough. Take a little bit of the oil and put it on the aluminum tray. You're gonna go ahead and flatten it using your hands. Flatten it in all directions until it's nice and thin and then you're gonna fold each side on itself to make a nice rectangular or square shape. Now make sure to leave some space in the center because that's where the meat is gonna go. Go ahead and put that on your aluminum tray and continue until your dough is completely done. Add in a nice amount of meat into the center of each dough square. In the oven, it's gonna be shrinking. So keep in mind that you don't want too much dough and not enough meat. Now with our first batch done, go ahead and get that in the oven at 450 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Now this is where it depends on how you like to eat your lahme bajin. If you prefer a softer dough, wait until it's just turning golden brown. If you like it crunchier, wait until that brown has set in quite a bit. And the end result? Ah, perfect! exactly how my teta's lahme bajin looks. In fact, I gave some to my grandmother and my grandfather and they said, absolutely delicious. So, I call that a success. Now for the best part, let's go ahead and taste them. So this is why I was saying to be very generous with the amount of meat. I put quite a bit of meat, look how much it shrinks. Mm. Oh yeah, honestly it reminds me of how my grandmother makes it. It's delicious. The meat is soft and falls apart. It's not like a hamburger where it has a bounce. The dough is quite delicious, has a crunch, and yet soft a little bit on the inside with a beautiful color. I have no complaints to say. This is, this is really, really delicious. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. Now don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Give us a thumbs up and ring the bell to get notified of future videos we have coming out. Here on Impossibly Kosher, we're all about authentic way to cook stuff, making sure it's delicious, that it's 100% kosher and all about family. So go ahead, make this recipe with your family, get your kids involved, get your spouse involved, and let us know in the comment section below how yours comes out.